One of the bigger questions left for fans to answer after the Final Fantasy VII Remake is a bit of a brain tickler. What's going on with Zack? For people who've never experienced any part of the Final Fantasy VII compilation before the remake, they've got literally no clue who he is without doing a little bit of further digging, a bit of research, or going back and playing some of the earlier games. But for those of us who've played the original game first, or at least played Crisis Core, or seen Advent Children, seeing Zack survive the Shimmer attack at the end of the remake leaves a lot of questions, shall we say. So in this video, I'm going to go over a few possibilities for what could be going on with Zack, and then give my opinion on how likely I personally think that they are. Don't forget to smash a like on the video, show your friends, get involved in the comments below, just, you know, get involved. But as always, let's get to it. The first possibility is the simplest one to go over. The theory goes like this. Zack dies. If you remember back to the scene from the original and even Crisis Core, Zack is killed not during the fight with the Shimra, but after it when he's helping Cloud back towards Midgar, to the spot where, at the end of Remake, he walks past Aerith and the rest of the party. It could easily be the case that straight after that point that we've seen up to, he is still ambushed and killed. Now I don't think that's going to be the case given what's been said in the Ultimania regarding Zack surviving uh, and what effect it's going to have, but it is still possible it could be a bit of a bait and switch type thing. I'm going to give this one a lowly 4 Gongagas out of 10. Like I say, it'd be a fun bait and switch, but I very much doubt it's going to go this way, and it's almost confirmed that it isn't going to go this way. In this theory, Zack's survival goes ahead, but it happens in the original timeline, if we're assuming that Remake is happening in a branched timeline, which I do. This is possibly one of the more impactful of the theories. Zack's survival in the original timeline would literally change everything about that story. Zack would probably still hook up with Aerith in the same manner that Cloud hooks up with Aerith, but it'd be via a different route. He'd, he'd probably end up involved in whatever goes on with Aerith, but that had almost certainly changed due to the fact that Zack probably wouldn't team up with Avalanche. And even if he did, the friendship that Cloud and Tifa has is what kind of holds that partnership together in the early stages of the game. Zack doesn't have that connection, so even if he does work for them, his involvement may still be diminished and he may not find himself becoming involved in everything else that goes on. On top of that, it's almost certain that he'd be heavily hunted by Shimra, which would push things potentially even further out of line. I'm going to give this one 8 Gongagas out of 10. The ramifications would be far-reaching, the possibilities would be pretty endless, and if the story was treated well, it could end up being quite an amazing way to go ahead with this story, if it's treated correctly. For this one, Zack has survived in the same timeline that the game, the remake, takes place in, just at an earlier point. He'd probably end up having a similar effect on the story as I've laid out in the previous theory, but one possibility is that the party was shielded from the effects of Zack's survival due to them being in the realm that Sephiroth opens during the final fight. This could put them temporarily out of the timeline and therefore immune to any alterations or changes. It could lead to a situation where we see the party going on as if nothing's happened and, you know, chasing Sephiroth as they planned to. But things then take a bit of a different path due to the change of Zack being alive. People may not recognise Cloud, who we've met in the remake, because instead of interacting with Cloud, they may have interacted with Zack in a different time. It is, it's uncertain. I'm going to give this one 6 Gongagas out of 10. For me, while it isn't very likely that he's survived in the same timeline, it would be possible. I just It'd make the story the most convoluted it could be, I believe. So no, I don't think Zack has survived in this timeline, the remake timeline. Which leads me into the final theory. Finally, we have the third timeline, the unexpected timeline. For this theory, Sephiroth has found or created the timeline branch that the remake occurs in. The team defeat the Whispers and the Singularity pops. Zack survives, but because of this, he doesn't go back to the original. It hasn't had an effect in the remake. Instead, what it's done is it's created a third timeline. Now, if this ends up being the case, I think it's going to be a timeline that Sephiroth isn't prepared for. He's not accounted for what's, you know, the ramifications of this third timeline. And it could potentially be the thing that leads to his downfall. At the end of Remake, Aerith definitely felt or perceived Zack's presence, but it also seemed like Cloud and Zack respectively picked up on something as well. 
if the three of them are linked via the live stream like they've seemed to be in previous parts of the compilation, it's not outside the realms of possibility that maybe vague visions could be transferred between them in the same way that Aerith and Cloud and Red 13 and Barrett have seen small flashes of the original timeline. At the very least, I feel like Aerith alone would have some ability to do something, even if it is just to send, like I say, a vision or a feeling or an emotion to Zack or maybe to perceive what's going on with Zack and act accordingly. I'm not too sure which way it will go. Regardless, though, if you believe the three timelines approach that I've gone over previously, and it is the one that I feel is the most likely, Sephiroth has created or gone to the remake to gain further power, but also to possibly have some effect and cause some change in the original timeline. If that's the case, it stands to reason that in a third timeline that's been created by the party's actions and Sephiroth's actions, Zack's survival could also have an effect or cause some change, but this time instead of on the original timeline, on the remake's timeline. The timeline layout does get a bit messy, but it also can quite easily make sense. You've just got to think of it from the viewpoint of the original timeline. Something happened in the original timeline that created the remake timeline. Probably something that Sephiroth did. And then again, the Zack survival timeline has been created from the remake timeline due to an action that's happened in that timeline, which is defeating the Whisper Harbinger and causing the singularity to explode. I'm going to give this one 9 Gongargas out of 10. It seems to me the most logical layout for things, but it could easily get overly convoluted and confusing if it's done poorly. For me, theories 2 and 4 are the most likely and most interesting. While I feel 4 makes the most logical sense given what we've seen so far, 2 would open up some massive possibilities as well and could still make sense, so yeah, I wouldn't be adverse to Zack surviving in the original timeline. Plus, in the Ultimania, we have translations where it states that the two clouds cannot exist in the same time and space, which near enough guarantees that it's either Theory 2 or Theory 4, because both of those have the two clouds in separate times and space. The danger is that when you mess with time in a story, you can easily make it so convoluted that it stops making sense. So fingers crossed that doesn't end up happening. But what about you? Do you agree with any of these, or do you have your own theory on what's going on? Do you want to expand on any of the theories? What do you think is going on with Zack? Drop your thoughts in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel for more Final Fantasy related content. And most of all, have a great day.